So what happens when a thousand people edit the same photo? How different does that photo become? In this video, we're gonna find out. Morning everybody, fantastic to see you all again. So I thought it'd be a really good idea to turn the tables a little bit. I did a video a while back that was all about me editing your photos. So I thought, what about if you got the chance to edit one of my photos and so that a lot of people edited the same photo? Now I thought I might get 30 or 40 people edit the photo. I put a message out on Instagram and I sent an email out to people on my e-newsletter e subscription. If you're not following me on Instagram, make sure you do for, for more announcements like this and the link to my e-newsletter is below. But the response was crazy. I mean, I, I started getting a lot in early on. I thought, well, that's, that's a bit crazy. But this response was crazy. I got over a thousand people editing these photos. So I'm gonna have a look at these three photos and I'll tell you the, about the three photos in a minute and why I chose them. But first, what I wanted to say is photography is an art. It's an expression, it's about emotion, it's about how you wanna portray a feeling. And obviously it's difficult if you're editing somebody else's image because you weren't there when I took those images. I always find it difficult when I'm editing other people's um, images. So what you've got to try and do is look at that photo and then try and edit it in a way to express how it makes you feel. And so there's no right or wrong. Uh, I think there's techniques you can use to edit and there's good techniques to edit things in a, in a good way to, to get a, a technically good outcome. But there isn't any real right or wrong to photos. And I want to show you some of the extremes as well because I had really subtle edits like this and then really big edits like this. And some people might like the subtle edits and some people might like the more substantial edits, but there's no right or wrong. So let's have a look at the three images. The first one was one from the Faroe Islands on this fantastic um, evening here watching the sunset. It was really spectacular. I thought this was good because it's quite dramatic. The lighting was quite dramatic and probably was the one that most people edited, if I'm honest. Um, the second one was this one from Lofoten, where it was a really dull, overcast day. There was no real definition in the clouds, although there was some. Um, the third one was a woodland scene, so a completely different type of scene. And I feel like there's different editing techniques that you can use for all three, so I thought that'd be interesting. So the other thing I wanna say is that these are my thoughts on these edits, and like I said, there's no right or wrong. These are just my thoughts, what I feel about these edits. What I've done is I've uploaded some of the variety of images to my website. I've written a blog about it and you can check that out in the description below or there'll be a link here. So go and have a look at that. And I'm gonna show you my edits of these three um, images as well at the end of the video. And they're definitely not as good as some of your edits. I'll quickly show those at the end of the video. So what I wanna do is I wanna talk about these images based on uh, techniques and the way that we look at images because I think there's some really interesting things and patterns in the way that these images have been edited and the first of those is light and how we control light in an image when we edit it because we've got a lot of features within Lightroom and Photoshop to be able to use to control that light. So if I go into this one from the Pharaohs here um, so this is the standard um, image you know you can see that the Sun is, is a bit of a spot there, there's, there's not really, you know, when I was there taking this image, it was, it, it looked more impressive than this raw image did. And by and large, a lot of people took that sun and then diffused it a little bit using the radial filter. Is a good example. Um, you know, he's, he's taken it and he's brought out that light and not cropped it so much. And I'm gonna talk about cropping later, but yeah, it's, it's really, really fantastic. Uh, I really, really like how he's, he's brought this out. And there's, a, there's, there's more examples of that as well. Here's another one from Carmen, who's done a similar thing. And I think Carmen's probably put some sort of um, sun star on here, some flare on, on the sun. I don't know whether she's done that um, with Lightroom or Photoshop or Luminar or something like that. But yeah, I, I think it's quite subtle. I usually don't like those things too much, but I think the way that she's done it in a subtle way is re really, really interesting and brought that out re really well. Um, now this is an interesting one. This one's from um, Thomas. 
And there was a couple like this, actually, where rather than increasing the saturation, they decrease the saturation from, from the sun. And I quite like that because I feel like it, it, it just creates this quite pleasing image to look at. Now, there's two ways of looking at it. Obviously, you can really ramp, ramp up the saturation or you can reduce the saturation or you can leave it pretty much as it is. I tend to reduce the saturation. So this is more the feeling that I, I like to do in, in my photos. Um, this was one in between them, really, which was from um, Santiago, which is a really, really nice image. And this one from Felix, we're getting on to now cropping the images a little bit. So um, Felix here has done this great edit of this image, again, quite softly saturated, uh, but he, he's cropped it slightly different. So we, we've removed the person as well. Um, that's a different question. Is that person good or bad? And I, I could never decide that with this image. And I'll get onto a one later where I think, you know, uh, he, he's dealt with it very, very well. But this is quite an interesting crop, I, I think. And it's how I posted it on my Instagram. So staying on cropping the images, you can see this one here is, um, you know, again, cropping out that rock on the, on the left-hand side. This one's from Jack Lodge. Um, and Jack has cropped out, and if you look at the, the rock here, it sort of in, intrudes a little bit on, on this sea stack in the back. And what Jack's done is just cropped it out and probably used content-aware fill in Photoshop just to fill that in. And I think it's a nice edit. His color tone is slightly different than some of the others, which I think is interesting. It's got a slightly more purpley look. Um, which there was some purples in the sky, so he's pulled some of that out. Then um, this one is interesting. And, and, and what I wanna talk about with this shot here is how you can use dodging and burning to emphasize certain parts of the photo. So what um, Jeremy's done here, I, 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 I believe, is he's dodged the sky quite significantly. So if you compare it to some of the other shots where the sky looked bright and you know, more red and more like it was part of a sunset. This one almost looks like it's some sort of storm clouds and he's, he's created a lot more drama in the shot. Um, and it almost looks like the sun's just poking up, po poking out of one of those storm clouds. So it's changed the, the feeling of the image by dodging it a little bit more and he's kept it quite dark in the foreground as well, which I actually really like. And then the person's then a silhouette. So I, I, I really like the way that Jeremy's used dodging and burning to create emphasis within the, the image, which is a really great technique. Um, and this is, a, a, again, a similar one by um, Ryan here. Uh, he's done a very similar thing. Uh, and there wasn't many like this, actually. So this, this is quite interesting, but he's darkened the rocks even more, um, which I think's which I think's great. The, the, the other thing I'd, I'd point out, just on this one, you can see, if I, if I just zoom in here, um, you can see that... The, the waves have got a little bit of blue color. And people did varying things with that, so just changing the color of that of that um, wave, but not as much as I probably thought. I, it's something that I, when I edit, edit it, you'll see I'll, I'll, I'll put more emphasis on. Okay, onto the next image, this one from Lofoten. So this um, image, this is a, an edit by um, Amelian, um, and he has done a great edit here, but, but quite what I'd say, uh, a standard edit. It's probably closer to the sort of thing that I would do this, where there's some beam, some more dramatic edits as well. Now, if you compare this to the original image, he's pulled out the detail in the sky because the raw, um, the raw file was really detailed. Um, it was exposed quite well, if I say so myself. Um, you know, I'd expose it right to the right hand side, and there was a lot of detail in the clouds that could be put brought out without creating any noise whatsoever. He's done that re reasonably well. Um, and the color of this is probably true to life. So I think he's created a very true to life shot um, there. Now this one um, is, is by Thanos. Um, Thanos, wasn't he somebody in a Marvel? Thanos, he was. So <laughs> Thanos, probably not the Thanos, has, um, has created this really nice, but differently toned image. And this is where I want to talk a little bit about color. Now he's pulled the sky out a little bit more and, and pulled out these clouds that were sort of hanging over the mountains a little bit more, which I think is really nice. But you can do a lot of different things with color. So if you compare this image here to the next one here from um, Gear, then you can see what Gear's done is he's tried to pull out the color of the houses. Now, 
this is really interesting because it's just emphasized color within an image. And I think this is just really great. Now, because I've been there and I know what these houses are like, for me, I probably have toned the, the red a little bit towards more of a, 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 a magenta type red rather than this sort of orange type red. But I like the idea of it and I think it's captured the rock colors really well. So by changing color and emphasizing color within an image, you can create all sorts of different um, uh, feelings with the image and again this one is probably closer to true to life and is dark in the sky even more so this is this is really nice from um, Rodeslaw. Rad Radeslaw from Radeslaw. Now I want to show some of the more artistic shots of this image at the end um, because you know, some people went to town on, on, on this on this particular one, and I think it'd be interesting to see some of those, see what you think, um, and show you some of the more artistic, I would say, um, edits of the three photos. So I'll show those at the end. Okay, onto the woodland image. And the reason I included this is that, one, I like it as an image. It's, it's a shot that I really like. Uh, I spent quite a lot of time trying to line up all the trees. Um, but, but also I think there's a lot of cropping potential in this image. So what I'd hoped and actually what did happen is that would, people would crop it and, and use different ideas for cropping the image. Also people went to town with color on this as well um, and also sharpening. So I wanna talk about those three things, cropping, color and sharpening in this image. So this is one of the most colorful ones, first of all. This is Lubus um, and he has done a, a really interesting crop and it's a crop that I have used before on this image. It's definitely a good Instagram crop as well because obviously it's, <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a portrait style crop. But what he's done is probably one of the most saturated edits of this image. Now for my personal taste, this is probably a little bit too saturated, but again, if you did all your images like this and you had a set of images that were, were, were looked the same, then I think that's fine. You know, I think this would look really good printed. I think if you had them on the wall as a set of images, I think they would look great. But for my personal taste, I think it's a little bit oversaturated. However, it does bring out these autumn silver birch leaves, which look really good. But I, let's have a look at some of the other crops. So this one, um, this one's from um, Michael. And, and Michael here has done a crop almost the same as my crop. One of the things he's also done is, is done a really good job of the, the sharpness on this. So he's not sharpened it too much. So, so I, th I think he's probably re reduced the clarity of it a little bit. And that's really nice. It's really soft, subtle lights. His blacks aren't too black. And that's an important thing when you're doing forest shots that you don't want that histogram just to go all the way to both ends. It's a good idea to have a bit of a gap because usually you've taken some woodland shots with a bit of atmosphere, maybe a bit of fog. There's no real blacks in the image. And I think, you know, Michael's done a really good job of that. One thing I would say, and this is where we get into cropping, is that he's left the sky in here. And if it was me, I'd either crop that out or try and do a content aware fill on the sky, which is often difficult when you're doing woodland shots because I think it's a little bit distracting. But apart from that, he's done a really great job. Um, now this is a, a shot which is a similar to the first one. The edits aren't quite as harsh, but I feel that the sharpening's maybe just a little bit too too much. So this one um, from Kenneth, I really like the feel of the shot. I really like his edit. I, I love um, that the, you know the, the way your eye sort of goes through the image, and it's something I probably didn't spot when I was taking it, but right through here to the distance. But I feel that. It's just slightly over sharpened and you can see that we're starting to get some, uh, some funny artifacts. So you've got to be a little bit careful, even with a quite a good quality image like this that's taken on a, you know, a low ISO on a high megapixel good quality camera, you can still introduce artifacts if you over sharpen it. Um, this was a really nice edit that I just wanted to show from Mario, um, where he's, he's probably split toned this a little bit. So, so Mario dodged and burned some of this in, in Photoshop using layers. I think he's done a good job. It's not over the top. It's again more what I like, that painterly type look. And I like the browns he's brought out in the silver birch as well. Um, and it's, 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 it's a nice crop. Um, this again is going more towards that painterly look from Simon. Um, and it's almost like got a, a fairy tale feel to it. So by again reducing that um, clarity or reducing the dehaze, you can you can get more of a soft look in this, and that's that's really interesting. I really I really do like this from Simon.
And, and then we're sort of going on to some of the more dramatic edits. So this one here um, from Frank, he's done such a good job of this dramatic edit. I mean, it, it, it's quite amazing, really. It almost looks like we've got this side light coming in, um, really picked out these, these uh, ferns in the foreground, and it just shows just between these two images here how different you can get an edit, which is, which is amazing. And then going even further, this one here from Kev, he's really looked at masking this, using some dodging and burning, created some key tones in it, and, and pulled out those tonal highlights on the silver birches, but then leading your eye through. I think this is a really amazing edit um, from, from, from Kev, and something that I just wouldn't have expected from, from that, that image. So, amazing job. Oh, my fire's going out. Um, you're probably wondering why I've got a fire in, the, in what is coming into summer now, but it's actually really cold in, in here, especially when there's no sun out. And what's nicer than looking through some edits and, and, and playing on your iPad by a fire? So now we're looking at some of the more artistic edits, and I'm, I'm really pleased that Andy did an edit of it. Um, I was looking through them, and I saw this, and I thought, whoa, <laughs> what's somebody done there? And then I looked at it, and I saw it was and Andy Gray, who's obviously um, you know, famous for doing these types of edits, of just composing, and he really turns it into um, more an art um, and using photos as part of that art. And, but this is so interesting. I think he's done such a good job of it and really captured the emotion of the Lofoten Islands here. So, you know, thanks Andy for editing this. I think it's a really good job. And like I said, there's a blog with all some, some, some of the um, edits on there. I put probably 30 or 40. You can, you can take a look in the link below. So then again, look at this one from Lofoten, you know, a, a real interesting edit that's really changed it quite, quite significantly, um, you know, bringing out a very light edit. Um, this one's from uh, Arjun. And then we get onto the more substantial edits where we're starting to create something that's away from the reality of the scene that I took. And this is from Gabrielle. Now this is a whole different video because this, th this image, if I looked at it, I go, oh God, I wish I'd taken that. Look at that amazing sun. This is incredible. And Gabrielle's done a really good job of, of this. Um, but it's something that, for me, I don't really like it. It's one of the things that, there's, that I think there's a package called Luminar where you can do sky replacements. And it's not really photography for me that. I, I think it, it generally is just, you know, grabbing things and sticking them together. Because if you haven't taken that sky and you put it in, then I don't think you have the same feeling of accomplishment. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe people think differently about that. I'm sure they do. Maybe, you know, put in the comments below, what do you think about replacing skies? But for me, I don't really like that. However, having said all that, I'm not saying that Gabrielle hasn't done an amazing job of this. She has, and actually, when I saw this, I thought, oh my God, that's amazing. So I, I love it as a shot but it wasn't the reality and and um and i i think you 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 it's it's not just the reality it's it's the ability it's it's the fact that you know that you've been and taken that shot and and i like to take a shot that's been taken at that set on that same day rather than even going and combining shots from three or four different days it doesn't really work for me so they were they were some of the amazing images and that's just a tiny proportion of the edits that everybody did for this um, challenge. Now everyone's going to think, are oh, you going to pick a favourite? And I am going to, I'm going to pick a favourite for each one. My favourite for the Pharaoh shot is this one here from Santiago. Um, I think he's done a really good job, it's quite subtle, different people have different favourites um, but this is my favourite so well done Santiago. My favourite for the Lofoten one was this one from Radislaw. And, and again, it's not too dramatic, but I think he's pulled out the sky really nicely. It represents what I saw when I was there. He's not overdone it, he's not over sharpened it. So this is de definitely my favorite. And again, everyone's not gonna agree with this. And I'll put more of these in, in, in the blog below. So have a look at that and, and see what you think. But that's my favorite from there. And then my favorite from the Woodland Scenes is actually this one here. Um, from Kev, this black and white shot, just because it's so different, and I was so blown away by the you know, the amount of um, creativity that went into this. So yeah, I, I really like this. 
Okay, so I said I'd share my edits of, of them, so I, I won't say too much about them, um, and maybe I'll go into that in, in another video, but here's my three shots. So, that, so that's it, and just to say something about style, creativity, editing, the edit part of photography for me is where you invoke your style, your personal style on that photo, and everybody's different. There's no wrong or right. What I would say is try and find your style, and then try and edit your photos in the same way and maybe print them out or put them on the page and see if they all sort of blend together quite well. Because it's quite satisfying when you start to develop a style and then you start to edit things in the same way, then they tend to gel together really nicely and it can be, it can be a really satisfying thing to do. I've developed a style that's quite painterly um, and I, you know, I, I keep fine tuning it a little bit as I see other people's work or if I get inspired by a shot that I take. But having that style is something that, that can really elevate your photography as, as you go forward. The other thing is that the, the, the files to download are still available, the link's below. Um, if you wanna go and edit them, that's great. What I do say is share them on Instagram. So feel free to share my photos, um, tag me if you want to, don't worry if you, if you don't, that's fine. Um, but just tag them with the hashtag hash 2020 ND edit. If you put, post it on your story, tag it like that or, and, I, and I'll um, repost them. Or if you post it on your feed, then we can all search for them and, and see all those different edits. And, and that's a good way for everybody to see them. And if you've already posted them, then just go back, back and add that tag. And maybe some of you can use these editing skills to go back through your catalog, find five images and enter them into the World Landscape Photographer because there's still a couple of weeks open. We've raised a great amount of money for COVID-19, helped to fight COVID-19, um, which I'm massively grateful for. Uh, and um, on that, I'll say bye and I'm gonna have a midweek video out next week. Thanks ever so much for watching. Bye. You are, you are.